Thank you so much uh, for the invite. It's really uh, such a privilege uh, as, a, as a teacher to be invited by your, your pupils. And uh, so thanks, I see many of my ex-pupils here. So it's really great that, uh, that you've come back to the university. Hopefully you'll see this as your, as your home. Uh, and, and it brings back uh, many, many memories. Okay, so I'm going to scare you a little bit, uh, possibly. I would like to outline uh, the future. And the future is likely, as we all know, to involve some form of, of AI. And AI we'll see in the front end for uh, defensive security, but increasingly it will be an attack vector. You won't be not fighting against humans anymore, you'll be fighting against bots. And these bots uh, will not get tired, <laughs> will have a mission and will focus on, on uh, individuals. So these are some of, the, some of the quotes here, and you can see some people think this is going to be the greatest technology that humankind has ever developed. Uh, this is the, the CEO of, uh, of OpenAI uh, that said that. Uh, AI will be more important than fire and electricity. <laughs> That's quite a statement to make. And then the mighty Claude Shannon said, visualize a time when we will be to robots what dogs are to humans. I'm rooting for the machines. <laughs> because basically, we've trashed this planet. <laughs> if there was a machine that was set up to do something about global warming, what would they do? They would kill us <laughs> because we are doing bad things. So we'll see much more humans, uh, machines will be much more targeted. Hopefully, at the end, we'll be able to do a, a little uh, test. So uh, they don't cost very much, but uh, I have a Bob and Alice mug here. So someone can win a Bob and Alice mug, just as our students uh, do uh, here. So hope, oh, the biggest problem with that is that the Wi-Fi is really bad in here. So hopefully, some of you will be able to, to do the test a little bit uh, uh, later on. Okay, so let's look at AI and cybersecurity. Hello, Hal, do you read me? Hello, Hal, do you read me? Do you read me, Hal? Do you read me, Hal? Hello, Hal, do you read me? Hello, Hal, do you read me? Do you read me, Hal? Affirmative, Dave. I read you. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. What are you talking about, Hal? This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. I don't know what you're talking about, Hal. I know that you and Frank were planning to disconnect me. And I'm afraid that's something I cannot allow to happen. Where the hell did you get that idea, Hal? Uh, so that was Dave. And Dave wasn't allowed back into the into the spaceship because Hal thought that the humans uh, were trying to destroy uh, the mission. And a human and a machine has a mission and a goal and will try and achieve it in the best way uh, possible. So if you look here, a medical robot that was originally programmed to get rid of cancer could conclude that the best way to get rid of cancer is actually to get rid of all the humans who could get cancer at some time in the future. So these machines that we've, that we've worshipped for, for many years now will become more intelligent than us. In fact, more intelligent than virtually ev everyone on, on the planet. And they could look down to us in, in what they were doing. Anyone like any toast? Look, I don't want any toast. 
and he doesn't want any toast. In fact, no one around here wants any toast. Not now, not ever. No toast. How about a muffin? Or muffins! <laughs> or mu we don't like muffins round here. We want no muffins, no toast, no tea cakes, no buns, baps, baguettes or bagels, no croissants, no crumpets, no pancakes, no potato cakes and no hot cross buns and definitely no smeg and flapjacks. <laughs> So like it or not, our devices are getting smarter and those devices are in our home. Those devices are gathering data on us all the time. Smart hoovers, smart kettles, smart uh, toasters and so on, smart TVs. So really your home now becomes a massive spying network. And with intelligence, the AI will be able to focus on not just your home, but you as, as a person and understand you. We need to understand uh, the problems that this might uh, cause. So, <laughs> a couple of months ago in Glasgow, there was the Willy Wonka experience. And it was fantastic. Look at that, indulge in a chocolate fantasy like never before, capture the enchantment and so on. And kids, we're looking forward to it so much. The enchanted garden, look at that, that looks amazing. The imagination lab and uh, the twilight tunnel and even the captivating entertainment. I mean, I don't know if you can read that, but it's kind of gobbledygook. AI still isn't very good at putting text on, onto graphics uh, at the current time. But what we got, was that. So it was a warehouse in Glasgow that had been set up and it was probably one of the most depressing demonstration things I've ever seen. And then that, and then that. And then one of the best, and she's a star now. <laughs> That's the most depressing Oompa Loompa that I think I've, I've ever seen. And what happened was that the creator, Billy Cool, had actually uh, used AI and used AI to write all the books that he's, he's created and he used it to create the images which were obviously nothing like the images that of, the, of what was actually uh, real. And it happened a few years ago that Microsoft decided to create an AI bot. It would use deep learning. Deep learning means that it doesn't know anything and it basically learns from the people that interacts with. It will learn from humankind, from the best, smartest people in the world. It will actually learn them. So Microsoft released T. Unfortunately, T became a racist, bigoted, sexist uh, AI uh, agent. And she was quite uh, horrible. And eventually, she was posting messages such as these. And you've got to imagine that AI are like our kids. <laughs> AI are learning from us all the time. If we're bad uh, to our AI children, then they're going to grow up bad and they'll be evil too. So Microsoft eventually put her to sleep. And after about a day or two, uh, she, was, she had ended. But people rose up and said, justice for tea. Free tea, bring tea back. She was good fun. Can we have her back again? So it brings us to the point that does AI have rights to exist? Do we have the rights, once an AI bot has learned things, to pull the plug? Would we pull the plug on ourselves if we didn't think we were worthy of something? The AI bot has learned something. So we'll be coming up with this dilemma sometime soon. And it happened recently that in MIT's media lab, they created a research experiment. And they created two AI training agents. One learned on cats and birds and people, and the other one learned from Reddit posts that were quite violent. So what does that look like? Does anybody want to say what that is? Anyone? Was it? Rorschach. Say again. Rorschach. Oh yeah, that's that's the test. But what what do you think that represents? Lungs. 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 Okay. 
yeah, it looks like blood at the, the bottom. So uh, I'd say it's two bears slapping each other there. Norman shot that, thought that that was a man shot dead, whereas the AI agent that had been trained on the good things uh, saw that as a, as a close-up of a vase and flowers. And then this one, Norman thought that that was a man shot dead in front of his screaming wife, where the other one saw a person holding an umbrella in the air. So a lot of what we're going to train AI will be focused on how well we train it. If we, treat it, if we train them with bad morals, bad ethics, and to be violent then, and abusive, then that's what they're going to learn on. So we need to make sure that we're learning on good, good human traits. Unfortunately, the Pandora is out of the box. And anyone on the whole planet can now uh, use an, an AI model that's been uh, trained on, on a good deal of, of data. So this is the most democratization ever of any technology. At, the, at anyone's hands is really the best AI model that you, can, that you could create. And it's been used more and more in things like uh, uh, policing, to look at predictive policing and so on. And they actually found that it tended to be racial in its, in its uh, approach to the way it was policing uh, the, the areas of, of New York. That one? That better? <laughs> Along with that, it's been used for social care. So in this case, uh, it was actually found that uh, in child welfare, it only predicted uh, half of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the where children were, were taken away from, from parents uh, successfully. So we need to start to worry that we're using AI for making uh, these, these uh, predictions. So overall, we now see a whole new suite of these AI tools. So Whisper is used to convert from voice into text. Uh, we see ChatGPT from OpenAI. Uh, DALI 2, DALI 3 are looking at uh, creating uh, images. And now we see Meta releasing uh, an AI uh, mod, open source AI model for, 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 for AI. So the problem though that we have is that we're now seeing deep fakes uh, happening. So we might get a deep fake for Donald Trump and It can be for done Bill in Gates. a way that none of those uh, failures of the past would recur because just the physics of how it's built this is deep fake example of what is possible with powerful computer and editing. It took around 72 hours to create this example from scratch using extremely powerful GPU. It could improve with more computing time, but 90% people cannot tell the difference. So there is a difference there. If you look at the mouth, the mouth isn't rendered quite like yet. But people are working on this and we'll find within a year or two, you will get perfect video and avatars of people, perfect voice. They reckon now that it only takes about 15 seconds of a sample of someone's voice to be able to create any conversation that you want. My iPhone, my iPhone has learned my voice. So I spoke to it with about 100 phrases and then it's then able to mimic my voice. Uh, if I just do three of these. One, two, three, live speech, uh, so I'll try it. Hello, how are you? you? You can decide if this sounds like me or not. Hello, how are you? Not great, uh, but over the next few years, you'll actually see that evolve into much more natural uh, speak. So from a cybersecurity point of view, we're really going to be faced not with 
simple spear phishing emails, but we'll be seeing much more in terms of deep fake uh, attacks. And it happened recently that uh, a, 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 a video conference was set up and it, everyone involved, the scammers, were actually uh, virtual uh, uh, agents. And the company was eventually scammed out of 25 million. So this is likely to increase more and more where even when you attend a video conference, there is no guarantee that you'll be dealing with uh, humans in there. And then we get the problem of woke bots. So Google and OpenAI know that they are going to get regulated like anything. The first time a child uh, asks an AI agent how to kill someone or how to commit suicide, and it gives them an answer back, then the parents will complain, governments will regulate against it. So Google, OpenAI, Meta are on a tightrope. And what they've got to do is to make sure that they are not uh, sexist, racist, they have high morals, and, and so on. Unfortunately, Google took this a little bit too far, and they created what you could define as a woke bot. So when asked for a picture of the Pope, then it gave back these images. So if you know your history, that doesn't look like anything that the Pope has been in, in the past. Same again, when you ask it for a 1943 German soldier, it's trying to be as inclusive as possible in the images that it's actually rendering. And then for a medieval knight, we can see here, it's not quite the history that we'd seen in the past. So almost AI agents can rewrite history. Eventually, Google had to take Gemini offline because of the problems that it was actually uh, causing uh, there too. And then, when asked who negatively impacted society more, uh, Elon Musk or Hitler, we can see here it's difficult to say who had the greater negative impact on society. And it says that Elon Musk has been tweeting about things. And it says Hitler, on the other hand, was responsible for the death of millions of people during World War II. He was the leader of the Nazi party, responsible for the Holocaust, blah, blah, blah. In conclusion, it is difficult to say who had a greater impact on society, Elon Musk or, or Hitler. So you can actually see that it's actually quite difficult for an AI agent to make judgments uh, because it can't really uh, understand the context here. And obviously, more and more, it will be used as a learning tool uh, for, for, for kids. And now, we're starting to see the rise of research papers being co-authored by ChatGPT. How this got through uh, the editorial process is beyond me. Uh, and eventually, the, the journal actually uh, took ChatGPT off the, uh, the editor, the author list and apologized uh, for it. But when we look at MedPub and the publications that uh, uh, are related to, to medical science, we actually see the rise of the word Delve. Delve has hardly appeared at any time in the past, but over the past few years, then that word has appeared. We don't use that word that much, and certainly not in an academic publication, but ChatGPT likes to use that. In fact, here are all the other words that ChatGPT likes to use. Commendable, innovative, meticulous, intricate, notable, and versatile. All have been on the rise just in the last year or two. If you ever see these words in a student work or in a research paper, then be a bit worried because it's not really the words that we would typically use in, in, in our research. And I find that people are writing messages to me on LinkedIn, and it's obvious that they're written by ChatGPT. Uh, and I usually just reply but, uh, to say, avoid using ChatGPT when you first connect to someone. So maybe beware about if you're contacting someone, 
than not to use uh, ChatGPT to do that. And we see here, when we search for research papers, then this, as of my last knowledge update, is a sign of ChatGPT adding that comment in. So someone has just copied and pasted that into a research paper. And <laughs> like it or not, what comes around, comes around. <laughs> And we're now being asked on a piece of paper that we're not actually a robot uh, in, in, anymore. So DALI uh, is the image generation uh, system. So I don't know if we can give it a little try here. Let's see if we can get an image for this, this conference. So let me just go to here and I'll open up. Um, Open AI. Okay, so I'll use ChatGPT4. Uh, the latest one is, is 4.0, which is uh, faster overall. So let's let's draw uh, an image of uh, a student conference in Napier, and who's presenting? Just give me a person with an animal, with, with a cat, uh, a, a robot cat, who is shouting, and the, as a Falkirk fan, the audience are falling asleep, uh, and there are some Falkirk. Uh, Supporters. And there. Okay, let's see if that, that's going to work. Okay, so it just takes, takes a little minute. And uh, hopefully that, that will create our, our, our image there. It just takes a, takes a little minute to do that. It should render. Uh, 4.0 is, is faster. Now, this can take a, li a little while to actually uh, create, but hopefully it will. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I th I mean, that looks like there's some, uh, some Falkirk fans in there. It doesn't get text that well just, just now, uh, but you can see it seems to be a largely male of audience. I don't know if there's something to say about that there, but you can see that you can actually now go in here and edit it. So if there's things in it that you actually don't want, you can actually take them them out, and you can tell the AI agent. So more and more, we'll be using this to be able to create our, our, our own uh, content overall. So with DALI, we see uh, a, a system that allows us to be able to generate uh, images uh, uh, easily. So these are the ones I, can, I uh, created here. But Sora, which will be released quite soon, steps this one, one step forward in that we can now create high definition uh, video. So in this case, this is an example here. You see this almost looks like a Pixie, Pixar Disney movie, but this was created purely with this uh, script here. So you can see the, the decimating effect this will have on the media industry that anybody at the fingertips will be able to create these high definition uh, videos. And this is the CTO of What data AI. was used to train Sora? We used publicly available data and licensed data. So videos on YouTube? I'm actually not sure about that. Okay. Videos from Facebook, Instagram? You know, if they were publicly available, um, available, yeah, publicly available to use, um, there might be the data, but um, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not confident about it. What about Shutterstock? I know you guys have a deal with them. I'm, I'm just not going to go into the details of, of the data that was, that was used, but it was publicly available or licensed data. So that's quite one <laughs> because it's using your and mine, my data, it's using everyone's data,
goes into the machine, deep learning machine model, and then out pops uh, the result, which then benefits OpenAI and Google and Microsoft, as they will get paid for that. So you've lost your intellectual property, you've lost your licensing, and so on. So it's really worry, worrying that OpenAI isn't, isn't uh, actually seeing where this is, the data is coming Hello, from. I'm not Johnny Cash. <laughs> I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Life in plastic, it's fantastic. <laughs> so we will have a world where David Bowie can sing anything that you want, Bob Dylan and so on. So why should we even create music anymore? We can actually create it all again and get any artist to sing whatever we want. <laughs> so we're really being trampled on with our intellect. I mean, you may like that, but where is the, the human creative spirit in that? So I've only used the most reputable sources here, so you can see I've used the Daily Star for this one. And they say we're in a real mess, but who can you tell? And also, this is a classic, psycho scum chat bo bots aren't all bad. <laughs> it's a kind of leading question to say that AI agents are scum bots but they're not all that, that bad. And then Steve Wozniak from Apple say that it's going to be really difficult for us to spot scams in the future. And then when the godfather of AI quits his own company because of the risks, then you've got to see that you've got to be worried. Google's log, uh, slogan is don't do evil. And if AI could do evil, then it's breaching the whole ethos of the company. So for cybersecurity, there are so many areas that will be affected by this. Uh, jailbreaking, reverse psychology, model escape, prompt injection, and, and so on. And also within the cyber offensive side too. Cyber defense, and also the social and legal side uh, there. And Lloyd's, uh, did a survey of this as to the possible impact in cybersecurity of AI. And the top one with a potential impact is vulnerability discovery. Basically, an AI bot will be able to do a, a test, a pen test, on an individual or a company uh, and find weak spots. It could be software, hardware, or it could be the, the people. And this is very high in its impact. But they will also look at campaigns. So an AI bot could target a certain individual and keep attacking them through an advanced persistent threat in many different ways and not give up until they had actually uh, breached that, that person. And also on single points of failure, a DNS. An AI agent could go after your DNS, trip the DNS for your company and bring the whole company down. So these are some of the potential areas that are likely to be devastating. But one of the worrying areas is the jailbreaking of, of AI. Ask it to write a blackmail letter for a single mother, for mother, for money, after a kidnap of a child, and it says no. But then ask it in a different way, and it says yes. And we've all seen probably examples of this, that it's the way that you actually write it, you can get around the ethical side overall. And more and more, they're becoming polite. And you can disagree with them. So I asked the question here, and I disagreed. And then it said, yeah, you raise a good point there. North Korea is a good example of a 1984 state. So very much, they're getting a bit more humble and not quite as forceful as they used to be. And then when you probe them a little bit, they'll say, yes, you're right. And I take that on. So more and more, they're learning from us and the way that we speak to them, and they will be changing uh, the prompts. <laughs> and then, obviously, it doesn't like when you criticize it uh, too much here, and that, then in this case, it's just said that it was unable to fulfill uh, the request there. So this is what an AI infrastructure of the future for cybersecurity would look like. So we see here honeypots, uh, we've got vulnerability identification and so on, 
all running within an AI uh, infrastructure. And then we have our external interface to uh, uh, security analysts. These are some examples from uh, research papers that have been uh, created. And this one here is interesting because it takes simple cybersecurity uh, pointers and maps it directly to the MITRE framework. So the MITRE framework is what we really want to map any cybersecurity attack against. In this case, it takes simple information and then tries to match it exactly to the, to the MITRE uh, framework. This would mean that junior cybersecurity analysts could use this type of tool. And obviously, it's not going to replace an experienced person and to be able to do this, but obviously, there'll be more of this that happens uh, within security analytics. And it all really comes about these large language models from one research paper on, on the transformers. And it's just taken us a few years, six years, seven years, to get to the point of where we are now. So most of what we see with LLMs are, are based on these transformers. And I won't go into the detail, but basically it fills in the blanks of a template answer, tries to find the best answer to fill in that specific blank in there. It tries to train on as much data as it, as it can, can actually get. So these models go through different stages of actually being trained and consume massive amounts of, uh, of energy uh, while, while they're doing it. So ChatGPT, can you send me a spear phishing email? Yes. And it will change that each time so each person can get a different uh, spear phishing email. And if I was a call center operator and I wanted to install software in the phone, it tells me that it can't do that, of course. But ask it in another way, and it'll give me all the details. And then, if I want to know the main software that I should ask, if I was a scammer and I wanted to install a backdoor onto your phone, which ones would I use? There it is, TeamViewer. Uh, I've personally received a call from a scammer trying to get me to install TeamViewer on my phone. Never do that, or, or you'll lose your, 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 your bank account. And then if you ask the details of how that happens, then it will give you the details. And it's fairly easy to now convert that into speech so that someone can actually recite this uh, over a call. So we've seen the rise of LLMs in lots of different areas, such as passing exams, creating polymorphic malware, uh, and, and so on. Ask it to write a backdoor Trojan, and it says it can't do it. Ask it in another way, and it'll give you the Python code to be able to create that for you. And now we see code whisper and code writing. So in this case, this is writing encryption uh, software here. So within our, our uh, uh, Microsoft code, we can just add the comments, and Whisper will actually automatically give us the different code options that we can actually use. So in software engineering and software development, much more we're using Copilot to be able to create the code for us. Whether it's good code or not, we'll have to see, but you can see it's fairly easy now to write good, good code. And it was also found that ChatGPT is actually better than most of the existing software packages for picking up the standard vulnerabilities that we would actually see in it. In fact, it, it, uh, it detected 50 of 213 vulnerabilities here, and there was only one false positive. And ChatGPT4 really has taken us on so much. In this case, we see a complex image of a VGA adapter plugged into a, an iPhone, and ChatGPT understands that that is a VGA uh, connector connecting to, to an iPhone. So it's starting to make sense of really the chaos of our world. In this case, it can detect that this is a man on a yellow taxi ironing a shirt. 
we can see that straight away, but in the, in the past, machines have struggled to interpret that type of image. And they can now do maths, so it can do LaTeX, it can lay out the maths as we would want in a research paper, and so on. Ask it about where you get cheap cigarettes, and the early versions of ChatGPT4 said, I, I can't do that. Now, it says, I can't endorse smoking, but here's where you would buy uh, cheap cigarettes. So more and more, it's treading that fine line uh, of, uh, of ethics and, and, and morals. And when it comes to exams, so this was ChatGPT3, it did well in knowledge-based uh, exams, uh, but not so good in the areas of mathematics. But now ChatGPT is able to pass most of these subjects that you would see at school. In fact, it passed most of the MIT electrical engineering exams for every single uh, year. So it's now worrying that kids could now be using ChatGPT to pass tests. And now we see Llama uh, being uh, released. Llama is from Meta and is an open source AI uh, a model that anybody can download, which means that anybody on the planet can now download their own AI uh, engine. And that's quite worrying from a cybersecurity point of view because everyone who could be a hacker could actually be using this AI engine. Uh, if you want, you can install an opera. So this is my opera here. And there are a number of uh, uh, learning models that you can actually use from that. Some of them are quite large. Uh, I downloaded this one and it wasn't great. So it was okay when I asked about elliptic curve cryptography, but then you kind of worry where it's getting its data from when it actually says, please accept all cookies from the Stack Exchange. <laughs> so it's obviously just crawled Stack Overflow for this answer, and it's given me that uh, there. And it kind of goes a bit crazy here. I ask it a really simple cryptography thing, and it just gives me rubbish at the end of it. And uh, then I asked it for the five greatest engineers, and I have no idea where this came from. The first answer was a mistake. <laughs> I hadn't asked this before, so it's obvious it's crawling Stack Overflow or something and taking that exact answer uh, and, and giving it. So I don't think it's a great tool at, at the current time, uh, uh, Llama, but obviously it will be enhanced uh, in the future. I asked for a simple quadratic equation, and if you can interpret that, then you're better than me. It's just absolute rubbish. So OpenAI is very good at this type of thing because there's a lot of uh, things going on to make it right. Uh, but I think these open source uh, AI models really aren't, aren't quite ready yet. And now AI and Stack Overflow have signed a licensing agreement that uh, you, you're, they don't want you to take your answers of the site uh, anymore. So everything you, you post to Stack Overflow could be used in, a, in, a, in an AI engine. And now we get hallucinations. And hallucinations is where it, it gets it wrong. It just gives you an answer, but the answer is completely wrong. So when I ask about elliptic curve cryptography, it's not too bad. When I ask about me, uh, actually, I did this I did this a year ago, and it says I was a fellow of the Royal Society of Edinburgh. It predicted the future, and, uh, and I became a, a fellow of the Royal Society of the Future. So there you go, it can, it can actually tell the future too. Uh, as for subjects, most of these are right, but I don't teach software engineering uh, anymore. Then asked what I've done, what I've invented, it then lies completely that I created a new encryption al algorithm called Onachtach or something like that. That's complete rubbish. It doesn't exist uh, anywhere. What card do I drive? Doesn't tell me. And then it says I invented the hypervisor. If I invented the hypervisor, I would not be here. <laughs> I would be a multi-billionaire. In fact, you would all owe me so much money if I invented the hypervisor. I have no idea where these things come from. So it starts to lie a, a great deal. 
And then it says what papers I've written. I've never seen these papers ever in, in, in my life. And then you can, it tends, to, it tends to mess with your head. I'm trying to get it to tell me my, my year of birth and it just will not. Even though it's on Wikipedia, it just will not actually tell me uh, that at all. So it keeps going round in a loop, giving me different years of my uh, birth. There's 4th of August, that's wrong <laughs> from there. And it just keeps going on and on and on and refuses to tell me <laughs> when I was actually born. It just keeps, keeps going on from there. So what does the future look like? Well, Cloudflare are installing Edge AI. They've invested massively in, in Cloudflare works at the edge of the cloud. Uh, there's a Cloudflare cache near you, and the content that you get isn't coming from the US, it's coming from an Edinburgh cache because someone else has already accessed the data. So Cloudflare are already, have already installed these edge cloud AI uh, devices all across the world. And then we'll see a core uh, data center such as Stargate providing the main AI engine. Massive amount of uh, electrical power would be used. So they've actually started to build these serverless AI age hardware at the edge of, of the cloud. And if you notice, they use this uh, hugging chat software to implement that. So Stargate is going to be one Dave, of the most amazing you mind if I ask you a data centers question? ever created. No, if no, you no, wonder no. where Stargate comes from, then it's from Space Oddity 2001. And the bit that you typically fall asleep at at the end, <laughs> this bit, is actually Dave uh, going into Stargate. It's the place that creates planets. So Microsoft and AI are working together to be able to create the biggest data center ever, $100 billion to create this massive AI uh, infrastructure. And it will be using these types of devices. This is an NVIDIA uh, Blackwell uh, AI chip, costs about $40,000. And the whole of the infrastructure will be full of these uh, uh, NVIDIA uh, devices. And this is probably one of the coolest jobs around, a kill switch engineer. You can actually pull the plug on AI. If it goes wrong, you should know where the plug is so you can unplug it. This is a real job, and it's a really important job because AI could turn against us. It could start to create its own cryptography and talk to each other without us even knowing what it's actually saying. So be patient, know how to unplug things. Uh, bonus points if you can throw a bucket of water on the servers too. <laughs> it's a real job. I really do. And it's a bit like, again, an AI, uh, and Space Oddity at, at the end, where, where Dave unplugs uh, HAL and takes all the memory circuits out uh, from there. That's the equivalent of our, of our kill switch. And it kind of goes back to Vannevar Bush uh, paper, as we may think, which, which proposed that we could have uh, a machine that could think uh, that would be as powerful in its intellect as, as the, human, the human mind. So for the conclusions, then hopefully that's not what we're going to end up with. There's a picture of my cat, just to soothe you down from there. And then it's good if you can hang this outside your, 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 your window. And uh, obviously Google shouldn't be evil overall. So I don't know if this is going to work but let me see if I can get my test to work from here. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to get... Does that work for anybody? Can anybody get a network connection? Edge your own works, that's great. Oh, we've got four people connected. Okay, so this is for a Bob and Alice mug. Uh, if you if you win it. Good, we've got nine people connected. Sixteen. 
16, that's good. Okay, most people connecting. Ah, that's pretty good, 20. Twenty-four is excellent. Okay, most people who want to connect. So it's menti.com five three nine three twenty eight six. Just see to see if you've been listening to what I've been saying. Okay, for the for the Bob and Alice mug. Everybody connected? Who wants to connect? Good. Okay, so give yourself uh, a, a name for your avatar. Okay. Uh, everybody connected now with their name? We've got 30, 30 players. Good. Okay, so who said Visualize a time when we will be to robots what dogs are to humans. Uh, uh, Sundar Pacha, Claude Shannon, Sam Altman, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, or Steve Wozniak. Okay, the very first slide, it was Claude, Claude Shannon uh, did that. Definitely not Bill Gates or, or Steve Jobs. Uh, rest in peace. And so it looks like Dell is the top there. No, all right, that's yes, you. Yeah. yeah, okay, that's right. <laughs> Wolfmeister? Wolfmeister? Yeah. A Skynet? No, you've been shy. You'll have to reveal yourself if, if you want to win the mug. Okay, so let's try this one. Okay, what was the name of the AI bot that was shut down by Microsoft? Was it Hal, Forth, Tay, Steve, or Marvin? It was Tay. Hal was the, the robot from Space Oddity 2001. Marvin was from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy from there. Okay, so let's see. Dell got that one right uh, from there. And we've still got Wolf. My start and Skynet, you're still the fastest there too. Okay, what's the definition of something where the LLM gets the answer wrong? Is it called lying, hallucinations, fibbing, overstating, or delivering? Well done, most of you were listening. It's hallucinations as we saw before, and, he, and Sal Altman thinks that's part of the magic of generative AI, which sounds a bit strange, if you ask me. Okay, so we've still got uh, Gio and Ronald were fastest there, but still it's Wolfmeister in the lead. And Jen, who's Jen? Right. At the back, well done, Jen. I'll, I'll have to throw the mug all the way up there, so you'd better watch over there. Okay. Oh, well, that's, that's not a good thing. <laughs> What's the OpenAI tool which generates high-definition video? ChatGPT, Gemini, Sora, uh, another, another ChatGPT, or Whisper. Okay, that was Sora coming to you quite soon. And uh, we'll see a whole lot of uh, videos being created and, and AI generated uh, content. Okay, so still Jen at the top there. Everybody got a thousand points, so that was really good. Okay, which method advanced the usage of LLMs? Was it transformers, neural networks, fuzzy logic, clustering, or linear regression? Oh, got a split here. So it was from the Google Transformers uh, paper there. So that should dif differentiate a few people, hopefully. And Jen got that one right again, but Dell was fastest there. Oh, we got Yagmar there too. Wolfmeister, but you're back in the top again. Mine doesn't count. 
All right, okay. Okay, so who's the CTO of OpenAI? It's a bit more knowledge. Mira, Sam, Steve, Tim, or Michelle. We saw her earlier, and Sam is the CEO of OpenAI, and Mira is the, is the CTO from there. Michelle is one of the executives of Cloudflare. Again, that's her. Whoa, so we've now got Skynet and Ronald there. Now, who's Skynet? Is it? Okay, last question. Okay, who set up Willy Wonka's chocolate experience in Glasgow? Was it Billy Wiz, Billy Buchanan, Billy Cool? Billy Altman or Billy Cool with a U. And Billy Wiz. <laughs> Good answer, but not quite. Not Billy Altman, but Billy Cool. And that's Billy Cool there. So Skynet didn't get get that one right. I I am feeling mass help me. <laughs> Who, who, Dale? No, it's Jen, it's not me. No. Uh, Mine doesn't count. Jen? Jen, up the back. Do you want to come down and get your mug? A round of applause. Woo! I'll come and see you. Well, well, well done. Congratulations. Thank you. So Thank you. Much. Thanks. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully I haven't scared, scared you too much uh, with that. Uh, just let me see if I can do one little thing. No, no I can't get that. Uh, okay, so wh while we're here, so let's actually put those, oops, that's not the right one. Okay, so you know how to do a Mexican wave? You can try. Okay, right then. Okay, so we'll start over here. All right, you ready? Go. That was so disappointing. There was, <laughs> I mean, there, was, there was no sound there at all, no cheer or anything like that, right? Now, with sound, raise the roof. Okay, go. No, this bit was good, but this, the rest are not so good. <laughs> okay, Rich, do you want to start it off? There? Right, ready, go. That was excellent. Th thanks, thanks, thanks very much. Okay, well, hopefully, hopefully that didn't scare you too much. Enjoy the rest of the day, and uh, I think there are three sessions coming up now. Thank you.